Stage one and stage two engine chill has started. Engine hydraulics at pressure. And stage one fuel is closed out. Falcon 9 is in self align. Falcon 9 heaters closing out. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Vehicle tanks pressing for strong back retrack. Strong back retrack has started. Stage two RP1 bleed. Stage one RP1 bleed. AFTS final setup started. M bag igniter purges. Logo bleed. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal count. Stage 1, locks load close out. Vehicle is transitioning to internal power. Stage 2, locks load is closed out. Propound fills are complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Prime gas close out is starting. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in counter. FTS is armed for launch. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Stage 1, tanks pressing for flight. Welcome, Monkey Nation. This is going to be your sit rep. It is Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, and it's around 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. So if you would, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, bell for notifications so you get the latest and greatest. Also, remember, you can join our community either through YouTube membership or over on Patreon. And uh, if you do so, you get into the Q&As that take place after the show. Uh, and we've got an amazing community, uh, and it's uh You'll definitely not regret jumping over here with us. Um, it's uh, it is I, unmatched in my opinion. So, anyway, that said, let's jump over to the board and uh, kick the tires. Uh, we're kicking it off here today in Skyglass, as always. It's uh, we're sitting at three ninety one, but I can tell you, uh, just looking at these numbers and the congestion here in the middle of the state, uh, we're sitting uh, pretty high on trainers. And uh, you'll notice here, Tex 2, 71, we're going to remove those, and we're going to get down here to T38, so we got 23 of those bad mamma jammers in there. And then that'll bring our number down to around 300, which is still pretty high uh, as we kind of kick it off here to the side. Now, you can see that number will change when we start to see things off here in the horizon. In the background, that's going to be Europe, still very active today. And uh, so... Let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's see what we've got going on now. I will tell you, today we're going to talk about a lot of movement at bases. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what appears to be uh, a new front. Now, I know NATO has not mentioned anything about increasing numbers, but I have a, a sneaking suspicion that our numbers are going up exponentially in both uh, China or China, uh, in Asia and, uh, and in Europe. Uh, just based on the flows of aircraft coming and going. And it looks like we are mounting another Ford operating base and starting to prep things. I don't think we have a ton of stuff in theater yet uh, in terms of Ukraine. I think we've given them a lot of things, obviously, uh, and sent them a lot of money, obviously. But uh, in terms of the tanks and fighters and stuff that are all kind of uh, making their way into it, uh, or going to be making their way into it, uh, that stuff has not really entered into the Ukrainian theater yet. I think it's all being staged on the other side, and I think it's because we know it's going to go hot. And uh, when it does, we want to have our own stuff uh, there on the front end. Uh, I'm going to show you some news articles as well that uh, are going to be a little alarming relative to uh, how uh, 
really not prepared we are for going into a major war. It looks like if uh, assets get taken out quickly, we're not going to have the ability to replenish them uh, in a timely manner. So, all right, let's get down here. Let's uh, we're started off in the watch list as always, and we'll kick it off in Europe today. Uh, very busy. Notice we've got two very long trails there. Those are B-52s. Yeah, looking like uh, we're putting a little um, straddle fortress uh, fear uh, into the Russians there as we head up north. And then down here on this side of town, we've got an EC3. Notice it's doing the man in the middle tight circle right there over southern France. And then also that C-135, I think, is a misnomer. I have thought it was a sniffer, but when you look at it, it's got a boom on it. So that appears to be an air refueler, okay? And then we get down here to uh, just north of Tripoli. Again, we've got a low-altitude drone that seems to be looking at things out over the water very closely in the region. I'll show you some other flight data uh, that we'll be looking at uh, today as well, uh, indicating that we are very concerned about things going on in that region between Tripoli and Benghazi. Okay, so over to the United States, we kind of get into it. Uh, we've got the usual suspects, right? We've got a little Army intelligence bird there south, uh, kind of south of, of well, let's say, New Mexico, kind of in that tucked into that Biggs Army Airfield corridor. And then a, a couple of dash, uh, dash sixes. And then we've got a sea of stuff going on. Let's see if we just get into what's going on over Florida. Three NOAA birds and then a Homeland Security all in the mix. Those B-350s, those are going to be NOAA. Uh, that's going to be national weather. Uh, I don't know what they're looking at over Florida or what they're up to over Florida, but they seem to be very busy. And uh, it is mosquito season, and I do know they do some stuff there with that as well. But And then this... Homeland Security down off of Puerto Rico. Looks like it's starting to do a little, uh, another search pattern there between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, right there off of uh, Rincon. Another Dash 6 uh, department, uh, actually of commerce, but it's actually a NOAA bird as well. And then that, uh, Venus 67 is a trainer. So uh, any of the Venus call signs on the blue and white is going to be training uh, aircraft, Okay. All right, looking at the heavies, very spread out across Europe. We do have some activity there to the left in Portugal. looks to be Belgium. And then uh, notice there is a flurry of activity off of the coastline of Israel. We'll look at that closer here in a minute, too, with some drone activity. looks like Israel's been very active lately on our, on our map. And then uh, we've got some stuff up, in, up into Sweden. We'll look closer at the, at the pre uh, precise location here in just a second. And then, uh, let's see, that's Hungary actually rolling up in the neck of the woods there. So you can see a little, like, dropping something off up there, all right? And then it looks like that Hungary C-17 is in the region as well. Um, but we already talked about that. So let's get over to the United States and take a closer look at what's going on from that standpoint. It is uh, very active on the East Coast as always. You're going to see... Florida, there's a flurry of activity. Now, that's Patrick Air Force Base. You kind of expect that. That one down there is a little closer to, to uh, Trump, Daddy. And uh, I'm not, I don't know what's going on down there, but I don't see that very often in terms of uh, stuff going on the tarmac, okay? All right, then the usual suspects up the East Coast. Now, we'll kick off over Arizona here with air refuelers. Notice we got some activity running right up to the border there in Texas. And a flurry of activity there in central United States. And then we head out over Florida water over the Gulf Coast, which is a little DC-10 running some uh, routes out there, doing a little bit of refueling for God knows what, off of the Gulf of Mexico side of the house. And then our usual stuff going on over DC and, and Norfolk, Virginia, et cetera, right? So those are indicators of fighters which look to be uh, on the uptick today, okay? And then notice we got a couple 135s that just kind of, I don't know. Uh, well, it looked like it disappeared. Actually, it looks like it went out and went back off of, over Constanta and then returned. So, okay. Now let's get into the R-135s. These are going to be your aircraft that are looking, uh, doing reconnaissance, mapping battlefields. Uh, remember, contract an object the size of a soccer ball from 300 miles away. That is pertinent, especially when you're over the Persian Gulf looking into Iran. 
and uh, very uh, busy in that region as of late. So uh, obviously very worried about what's going on there. And then notice we got the triple tier, uh, the petty four, as I like to call it, of reconnaissance. Uh, actually, this looks to be, if I had to guess it, they look like they are actually doing maybe some calibration flights there over the Dallas area. Now they could be looking at something as well. We do know we had a big human trafficking bust. And then notice that one that just kind of goes a little dark there off the left side of Taiwan or uh, sorry, the, the east side headed left in our picture of Taiwan and then running right up into uh, kind of in between Japan and China. That's made China very uh, nervous as of late, just an FYI. Uh, I had some articles I didn't put in here because we got a lot to cover. So uh, that's going to be Lasai running uh, some routes there over uh, the D.C. and Virginia area. We've got, uh, again, continued Lasai aircraft uh, doing intelligence gathering off of uh, or over Honduras. And that's basically coast to coast. Uh, probably looking at stuff down in Nicaragua as well as north of there in Guatemala. And then um, let me back this up a little bit. And uh, this, uh, again, just notice that uh, it is running there just out over the water. There's Benghazi. Again, Tripoli, Benghazi, right? We're, we're looking at something very closely in uh, that general area. And then just kind of runs along Constanta. Uh, notice, too, that we are starting to kind of dig in. That Sofia is one of our big active military bases in the region. And uh, we've got uh, Macedonia there. It looked like we were looking at things in that area as well as to the south side of Kaliningrad and uh, to the left of Belarus. And then notice that uh, the Swedes are looking at stuff over the Baltic area. I guess they don't want another pipeline incident, do they? Okay, and then uh, notice this one's over Jordan, and then this one up over uh, Israel, like mainly down on the south side towards Gaza. So that uh, seems to be very active. Uh, just when you get the uh, the Palestinian side of the house up there uh, in West Bank taken care of and agreed to, uh, Gaza turns up the heat. So. Okay, again, there's that uh, drone. These are going to be your drones, drone activity. Notice that low altitude one. And then this Q4 that's running out of Malta and looking very closely at that area between, uh, well, I guess kind of to the left side of um, Turkey and then over the Black Sea, as always. That's kind of a usual thing where we've been seeing them as of late getting out over the Black Sea. I'm really surprised they're there. A little Q9 there in Southern California, I believe. Uh, that could be Palmdale, and that could be just uh, testing a bird before it hands, it hands the keys over. And then that one to the south of Winnipeg, another Customs and Border Patrol. That seems to be a hot spot for us. And then as we look, the one launching out of Jacksonville headed northbound, doing some uh, some runs there off of uh, looks to be Virginia Beach and, and that little kick out there. So, Okay. And I think that covers us. Now, let's just take a look at the Ukraine map. We're going to talk more about this in a second. Very active as of late. Uh, this A-50 AWACS is a Russian uh, air. Uh, it's basically the Russian variant of, of our AWACS. Um, air traffic control, advanced warning system stuff. Notice, too, we've got a lot of drone activity going on. Things getting shot down um, in both, uh, both sides. And then we've got a lot of uh, missile attack stuff because Ukraine has begun to send uh, their drones over into the interior of of Russia and taking some shots at them. Uh, I've got some news articles we'll talk about a little closer here as well. And then that that's the announcement uh, that uh, they were having air raid siren, sirens going on with missile attacks for Crimea, actually. So uh, then that UAV that crashed, uh, they said it was 100 kilometers away. It's 60 to 70 miles um, is kind of the range of where they've had this uh, activity going on there. Okay. All right. Let's get back over here to the flashbang side of the house uh, as we get into what's going on in the world. Now, looks like today he's actually uh, going to deliver remarks on his nomination of Julie Su to serve as the Secretary of Labor. So who is that? Uh, she's been a uh, deputy. 
uh, Secretary of Labor for a while, since like 2021, 54 years old, born in 1969, from Wisconsin. <clears throat> and so, uh, interesting thing, Julie A. Sue is an American attorney, and uh, she has been, like I said, dep- Deputy of Secretary of Labor since 2021. This is your big takeaway right here, is that she was serving under Newsom and uh, Jerry Brown. All right. So tells you everything you need to know right there. All right. Let's digress. Here we go. Uh, Breitbart. This one is interesting. The Pentagon investigates and gives the all clear over the Ukraine fraud allegations. It's uh, just basically turned a blind eye. I would imagine that our agency probably put a little uh, lean on uh, the Pentagon officials saying, hey, do this or we release some photos of you. And uh, I don't know. I'm just... uh, That's a joke. But anyway, nothing would surprise me more. But check this out. They have no corruption in Ukraine, folks. Just remember that Ukraine was not able to join NATO because they are so corrupt that uh, the NATO alliance wouldn't allow them into NATO. That's your first data point. Your next one here, head of Kiev, tax authority accused of multi-million dollar fraud. So this is a lady that they they basically just arrested. That was a picture of her with the uh, the jelly print over the top. Uh, but if you get down into it, you'll notice that they are in her office. Oh, nice little Christmas tree. And then, uh, oh, what? What's this in my drawer? I have no idea. I'm surprised there's not more uh, American greenbacks in that mix, honestly. There, I mean, there is a stack, I guess, at the top here uh, that's pretty thick. But uh, anyway, nothing to see. Got some nice little watches going there. And eh, let's see if we have anything else. No other pictures there. But uh, okay, so that's your first uh, or your second data point. And now keep in mind, too, that there have been four or five others in addition to this lady uh, that were wrapped up in a sting as of uh, starting, I think, around January to to now. Okay, then we get over to this piece and uh, that would not be the right one. This is let me get into where did it go? All right. Oh, here. No, this was the right one. A uh, Nigerian president says weapons are moving from Ukraine to Africa, and uh, he's criticizing the massive amount of U.S. weapons and ammunition flowing into Ukraine have now uh, drawn the attention of the fact that there is no mechanism for tracking the arms once they enter the country. Yeah, they said Lake Chad. They were actually digging up and finding that smugglers had buried uh, some of the uh, weaponry that the U.S. had sent over to Ukraine uh, in the area. So, again, nothing to see here. No corruption. The Pentagon is green, just fully green lighting the whole the whole operation. So, okay. Now, check this out. This doesn't happen very often. I will tell you, I I, I do remember presidents like Flashbang. Uh, well, actually, not Flashbang. Vice President Flashbang at the time, but uh, we do remember the Kenyan who uh, El Barak, as we call him, uh, had actually uh, fired all kinds of generals during his time and uh, started putting in his own folks. But this is interesting because I will tell you, as I I know some base commanders, and I will tell you um, they're they're former base commanders. They're gone now. They they actually took or opted to leave due to uh, policies being forced upon them. And um, But this is just another data point for you. Six leaders fired from an Air Force nuclear base in North Dakota, uh, and that is – it was uh, two base commanders, or two commanders, sorry, and four of their subordinates. So these are high, this is high brass. Uh, and to be those commanders, of course, in the Air Force, more than likely they're either light birds or full birds or up. They could even have some some stars on their shoulders. Um, but uh, you've got, uh, you know, like here, for example, here, this colonel, uh, that's, that's, a, that's uh, a full bird, and then a major, so uh, that's one down below a lieutenant colonel, okay, but those that's still some pretty high rank within there. And then uh, one of these here, it was just a two star in charge nuclear units under in the release. So there's your two star, right? So these are guys that are basically saying, I don't really dig uh, what the current administration is up to, and uh, I'm having a hard time uh, actually taking, uh, I guess, I don't know, direction from the guy, all right. Can't blame them, really. Uh, surprised we haven't seen more of that. I, I'm sure they're in the ranks, uh, you know, all over our country, really. So, okay, that's how you get coups, folks, all right? And uh, 
Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's how they happen. Okay, so here we go. Over to Zero Hedge. European anti-war protests grow as fears of NATO versus Russia spiral. Yeah, folks around the world, especially in Europe, are starting to say, yo, the U.S. is roping us into this one. Uh, it's because we have a stronghold in Ukraine. We've been talking about that for a long time. And uh, people are kind of waking up to it. And so I think they realize that uh, the rubber is about to meet the road. Okay. All right. Now, this one ought to get your attention. And I think there's going to be, uh, with the following news coming, uh, not a surprise, but uh, Iran can make fissile material in uh, nukes in about 12 days. So they are very close to having, a.k.a. the bomb. And if they figure out how to get that onto one of those missiles that we allowed them to have, um, then uh, we're going to be in uh, well, Iran, or actually Israel is going to be the first one on the target list probably, and then us. But uh, they will use it. Uh, these folks, uh, they don't have, they're not backward about it. I mean, they write messages on the side of their missiles saying death to us and uh, the West and Israel and everybody else. So just a data point for you, but I would not be surprised to see Israel actually take a preemptive strike here very soon if uh, if that information is accurate. Okay. All right. Now, here's one for you again over on Zero Hedge. We've talked about this. I've shown it in the past. We'll look at it again today. But it says there is a parking lot of container ships idle off of China uh, on the recovery bet. So these folks are basically pre-staging their ships, uh, waiting for somebody to flip the production light back on and start producing. And so we've been talking about this for a while. And I will tell you, it is uh, you're seeing the bleed downs uh, out there now. Uh, sorry, I don't want to do that. Uh, but this is off the coast of Shanghai. This is um, uh, the busiest port in the world, most advanced port in the world. And uh, you can see very, very active. However, uh, notice the sea of ships. We've talked about this many, many times. This ghost, all these ghost ships that are just parked out here waiting. Uh, and there are thousands and thousands of them. If you go down south, you can see it is north to south off the coast of China. It's because the supply chain is not working. And that's why our stuff is starting to run out. We're seeing a lot of things take a long time to get here coming uh, from China. Uh, stores that are heavy in Chinese manufactured product, they're not getting it or they're, they're basically you're ordering it and then you're on a wait and it may or may not ever show up. So uh, especially furniture coming from there. Um, anyway, I won't drop any names, but uh, they are definitely out there and lots of them. Okay. So, again, you can see them where they've all just kind of uh, tucked in together. Now, if you zoom in, they're spread out a little little further than that, but uh, uh, not good. All right. Okay. Now, let's talk Baltic Dry Index. Uh, it is on the eighth day in a row of actually an uptick. So, we see a little bit of a dead cat bounce here. Uh, it, was, it was plummeting and had been. Uh, if you look at the summary, uh, you can see actually all the way from – December, around the 22nd of December to just uh, around the 16th of February, it was in a free fall. And uh, we do see a little bit of a commodity bounce here. This is an indication of, uh, of your stuff that's going on to ships. And uh, as we look at the top drivers, just notice it's oil, natural gas, gasoline, heating oil, and um there, uh, there are, there's a little bit of soybean and wheat in the mix here, but most of this is going to be energy stuff, okay? Uh, and gold and silver. That's because whenever the, the dollar's weak or oil is down in terms of price, uh, people turn to gold and silver to kind of hedge everything, all right? So with that said, uh, the, the ones that are driving all of this, if you get into it, Europe— it's obvious it's middle of winter there right now, so you would expect them. They probably bled off a lot of what they had in the reserves, and they're trying to get uh, get it back in, so they've ordered a bunch uh, to help hedge probably uh, cost increases and things of that nature. So you got Europe, the U.K., uh, Australia, and then New Zealand, and then, of course, uh, I think that's Japan, right? China, uh, and then, yeah. So anyway, that's where we are today. All right. Those are your big drivers. 
on over. I may have gotten those symbols wrong there, folks. I will tell you, just uh, full disclosure. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Here's one for you. Scrounging for tanks, Europe comes up short for Ukraine. So we've been telling them, hey, we got tanks coming. We're bringing folks over. They're doing training uh, in the U.K., and uh, other locations here, including the United States up in Oklahoma at Fort Sill. And uh, and now all of a sudden we're like, yeah, we're, we're kind of running out of stuff to send you. So uh, that's not good. That means that uh, uh, they've, all the stuff that they've scrounged up to give them, uh, they're going to have to do reach back into new production. Uh, the U.S. has already said that they were going to send some new production M1 Abrams over, but that it was about a year out. I do know that we've already sc scrounged up about 100 U.S., tanks uh, to go over there where we've pulled them out of the mothball locations, retrofitted them just to get them running and sent them on their way. So we'll continue to watch that, but that's just a data point for you. And then here, Putin signs a law suspending the nuclear treaty with the United States. Yeah. So the new start, they basically killed it. And uh, it looks like uh, <laughs> we are headed at breakneck speed for some type of a, a nuclear conflict. Here, uh, just to kind of uh, add to that, the U.S. is finally, it's uh, actually transferring the Judgment Day aircraft to Europe. Those are those E-6 Tacomos, take charge and move out, uh, that we talked about in the past. And uh, in essence, they talk with the um, uh, submarines and the ICBMs. Okay, that's their purpose. So here, again, communication with nuclear subs for strategic purpose and serves uh, as intercontinental Continental ballistic missile carriers. Uh, there are um, submarines of the Ohio class, and, and actually that's who they're talking with, and each submarine can have up to 24 Trident II D5 missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads on board. Yeah, they all have nukes. I doubt they send them without. So anyway, that's a lot of damage uh, when you think that we've got anywhere between 70 and 90 um, U.S. subs in our fleet times 24 if uh, if they're all nuclear class, Ohio class, most of them are nuclear class uh, submarines. So, um, yeah, and then you take uh, China, who's got about 90, and Russia has about 90. I think we're about 70, if I'm not mistaken. But those numbers, you start throwing those into the unknowns relative to nuclear weaponry, and uh, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, not good, all right? Okay, now this one I thought was interesting. U.S. Air Force mobility aircraft, that's the REACH aircraft that we're looking at. When I say heavies, we're looking at C-17s, C-130s, etc. cetera. Um, those are actually operating without markings or tail numbers. Now, it doesn't mean they're flying. We can't tell what they are. Believe me, our enemy knows exactly uh, who these belong to. Uh, they recognize the aircraft. The only difference will be if it's a NATO bird, right? Because a NATO has... Uh, a lot of our same aircraft because we sell them to them. And so those NATO countries are flying around using our aircraft. That uh, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, there's a system in our aircraft, and I'm sure the, the Russians have it as well, called the IFF, which is um, basically friend or foe, right? It, uh, it's an identifier so that uh, these aircraft can tell what they're really looking at on their screen for the most part, Okay. Now, when you get into stealth stuff, uh, that can change because it can tell you it's one thing because of the, the signature that they're putting out and the size of the aircraft uh, until you're right upon them. Then you realize, oh, this is going to get ugly. Those are F-22s, and uh, I, I didn't pack my lunch today, right? So anyway, that is uh, just another indicator that uh, things are about to go hot uh, on all sides. Okay. All right. Check this out. Now, we were talking about tanks, and they're scrounging them up, and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. That's because this stuff is getting totally leveled when it enters the battlefield. Check this data point for you. Most Ukrainian soldiers uh, at this particular frontline location are killed within four hours. They're calling it the meat grinder. It's, uh, you know, I mean, we've seen movies like that, right? But uh, can you imagine you get pushed into this region, and you're— your probability to survive beyond four hours is <laughs> highly diminished. Uh, it's not good. Not good at all. All right. Now, this one I thought was uh, one that uh, pay attention to because we're seeing it more and more frequently lately. What is going on? Uh, another balloon sighting. 
Maybe. Uh, could it be a drone? Maybe. Uh, there are technologies out there that a lot of us, from a civilian perspective, don't know about. And uh, that is more than likely what we're seeing here. But uh, the airspace over St. Petersburg, Russia, was closed and fighter jets were basically scrambled uh, as an unidentified object spotted was spotted in the sky and that took place uh i guess 200 square kilometers of airspace was closed over that st petersburg as they uh they scrambled into the air to try and figure out what they were dealing with so again could have been a, a intelligence balloon could have been anything really could have been a drone depends really uh what we'll tell you is the altitude uh on the type of aircraft if it was a drone right if it's a q4 or if it's one of those little smaller ones that are low altitude so anyway that is a uh, something to watch because we hear a lot of that lately, a lot more of that lately. All right, Ukrainian drone gets within 70 miles of Moscow. Now, remember, we were looking at that just a minute ago on the uh, Ukraine map, and I said it said 100 kilometers. I've read different reports, 60 miles, 70 miles. Yeah, you know, it's within, you know, a, a degree of, uh, you know, I, I mean, you're still getting pretty close. 60, 70 miles is is close enough to get somebody's attention in Moscow, okay? If they start to put uh, hit Moscow with rockets, uh, you can bet it is game on. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Ukraine at that point just starts to get, you know, uh, pretty much hot, all right, all over. So, um, yeah, this, this is interesting. And like I said, uh, the war is beginning to change in Ukraine, and this is the thing that I'm talking about, right? These drone strikes in, on the interior side, uh, both in Belarus and both in Russia, headed towards Moscow. It's, uh, it's, this is going to be really, really interesting to see how this starts to change, especially with all of the equipment that we're putting in uh, to the theater. All right, so... All right, let's move on. Let's uh, get over here to the cyber map. It's going to be over at Checkpoint, courtesy of W Square. And uh, this is uh, interesting. The fact that uh, you can see we're at 46 million uh, attacks so far today. It's 1132 a.m. It's a little lower than it was on Monday, but it is still very active. We get over here to our Star Wars map and uh, the Bit Defender, and you can see, again, from the three-point line, they are getting peppered here in the United States, right dead in the middle. And then this one over here, probably two big data centers, if I had to guess. And it's probably why uh, your internet, if you see you getting the, the spin cycle there uh, on a regular basis, locking up on you, um, internet going offline, things like that, uh, that may be why. Okay. It's very one directional too. It's pretty obvious. Month number five, folks. Month number five. And I, if it goes hot, it's going to get a lot worse than this. All right. Okay, over the United States, going to be your NOTAMs and uh, TFRs, et cetera. Just uh, note all the boxes. These are either going to be, for the most part, military exercises or military operations. The yellow slop, that's turbulence as storms come through across the United States. And uh, we do have a very large box up here we're going to click on just to see what's uh, what's inside the bottle. All right. And, uh, oh, what? Well, this is weird. Uh, more NOAA flights. Looks like we got some weather modification flights out there. Maybe, uh, maybe. Let's see what happens. Maybe uh, the folks in Canada are saying, "No, Moss, you got to quit sending it our way, man." So we've uh, we've gone out here to help them out a little bit and uh, and take care of business. But we'll see. I know that's all speculation, but nothing surprises me more. Uh, notice it's very dry out here at the moment, even though we got some stuff here. Uh, that jet stream will take it right across the U.S. Depending on the direction, it could come up high and sweep down. Just depends on where the jet stream's going. But uh, I do find it interesting that these guys are getting very interested in the storms that are coming across. Could it be that somebody over here is uh, weaponizing uh, maybe weather? I don't know. But uh, in like a lion, not like a lamb, as they always say. All right, <clears throat> let's... Uh, Get on into the base because we are uh, rapidly blowing through our time here. So uh, Biggs Army Airfield, we've got a Delta Airline flight came in from uh, Fort Hood and then went from there to Ramstein. Now, I find that interesting because that is an Airbus, an A350-900. Uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty long flight. So, yeah, it's a very long flight, actually. 
All right, that's today. Okay, let me get down here to the scheduled stuff. Don't see anything there. Let's see if we lost or lost. I missed anything yesterday. I'm not seeing it. Uh, we had some stuff on Monday. We already looked at that. All right. Over here to Ramstein. Now, this is, uh, that's a Delta Airline flight. Was that the one we just looked at? Maybe. Yeah, A359. Notice that it's leaving here. Ramstein headed to Kuwait. Let me go back one and see if that is the same flight uh, that we were just looking at. Let me go over here to our departures. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. That could have been. Let me see if that's completed its leg. Uh, arrived four hours, 20. Yeah, that could be the same flight then. So we get over to Ramstein. looks like Delta Airlines has got a, a multi-leg flight going in. Uh, yeah, there it is. I, I should have just looked down. Arriving from Biggs. And then from there, it's headed over to Kuwait. Definitely carrying troops. No two ways about it. And then uh, this one here, Atlas Air, 747-400, moving to big parts. All right. And let's see if I've got anything else catches my eye. Uh, that's going to be a French... Air support and uh, projection brigade. All right. And let me see if we've got it. There it goes again. From there, looks like it's headed to Lion Brown. And then one camera flight headed out to Doha from there. So that is a 747-400. I'm wondering that's probably that Atlas Air came in from Baltimore. So brought some stuff over. Then they probably threw some seats on it uh, and then... Uh, send it on its way down to Doha. And then over here, notice we got one on the schedule board coming in from Fort Campbell. And uh, that's also an Atlas Air. And then, of course, we've got uh, another flight, a Camber flight, 747-400 uh, TBD. That's on the schedule departure. Different from this one. All right. So that's DOS Camber flights. Okay. Now, the other day I said we've got a new base that we're watching. Look like some, some uh, uptick in activity. POZ, or Poznan, uh, is the uh, first location that we were watching as they started to spool up a big, big push when we got the initial 300,000 NATO number uh, in play. It has since expanded. This airport, we do see things from time to time bubble into this airport, but for the most part, most of the stuff coming in here is commercial, okay? Every once in a while, we'll see a little camber flight roll in. That's probably a troop rotation uh, we'll see a, a Coletta Air uh, cruise in. It's probably delivering. It could be anything. Howitzers, uh, HIMARS, uh, Humvees, Striker units, anything. Okay. This is uh, RZE. This is the base that I haven't really been watching too much of, but I will tell you it's very, very active. Uh, you get into it. This, if we back up just so you kind of get a lay of the land, uh, POZ is over here, a little more interior of Poland. Uh, directly across from, uh, this is, I think, Warsaw right here. And then this is Belarus in here. And then if we get over on this side, this is going to be Ukraine. So RZE, that's a forward operating base. That is right on the border of Ukraine should this go hot, okay? So notice inbound from there or into there, sorry. Uh, you've got a camber flight from Nuremberg. We head on down. Um Let's see, there will be some commercial flights on here as well. German Air Force. And I don't see anything else that catches my eye on that side. And we get over here to the departure side and uh, German Air Force leaving. Mm, let's see, not seeing it. So here's what we're going to do. Let's just go to arrivals. I want to see what we've got. Uh, if we get into it, yeah, there's your camber flights. And then let's get on down German Air Force. See what we've got. This is kind of a two, two a rolling two weeks of stuff. Another camber flight, another camber flight. Um, British uh, Royal Air Transport. And, yeah, you can see very stacked up. That was last Monday. Or, sorry, this past Monday. Uh, yeah, that was this past Monday. Uh, a boatload of equipment rolling in and, and personnel, Okay. So that looks to be the new hot spot, and I think our number is going up. I don't think this is a rotation. I think we're actually starting to put more assets and boots on the ground and more equipment on the ground quietly, okay? All right, now this is going to be up in Fairbanks, Alaska. And uh, just to give you a general idea, we do have some NASA birds rolling in and out. More than likely, those are going to be supporting that NOAA stuff that we were looking at. 
And then this one here, that's going to be the NOAA uh, aircraft or NASA N926. And I'll back it up. Yeah, look at the wings on this thing. That is a very interesting looking aircraft, to say the least. And I want to say, ah, it's really hard to tell, but I harp is up here somewhere, very close to this area. All right. All right, let me back up again. NASA, NASA. And then uh, notice here we got a Western Global 747 400. That's going to be moving equipment more than likely because uh, it's not a camper flight. Uh, and that is probably stuff that was going over to Asia. And then there are your two NASA flights as they roll out this afternoon. Uh, another one on schedule. And then that one too, also schedule inbound, outbound. All right. Let's get uh, over here to the next one. So and we're looking at, what are we looking at? Uh, Atlas Air. So you got this one looks to be coming out of, ah, let me go down to the board because trying to figure out where these things are coming in and out of. Let me back up. Now let's just go with Europe, keep it at a high level. And then this one looks to be right there in the heel of Italy. So these are more than likely going to be troop-related or um, actually not troop-related. Those are going to be moving military equipment around the area, all right? Same thing with this one from Hano and these going into at least Japan side of the house, not China. All right. They fly frequently in and out of Hong Kong, by the way. All right. It's going to be Coletta Air just uh, again into Europe and into the Middle East are going to be the two that we're looking for on this uh, from this standpoint. All right. National Air Cargo. Uh, call sign NCR if you're trying to look for that operator. Uh, don't see anything up in the air now. They don't have, oh, wait, I do have one in the air. Sorry. That one's coming out of India, it looks like. And NCR, yeah, actually, uh, China uh, International. So, all right. Now, I do know just from talking to people, yeah, a lot of the pilots that fly for these airlines like Coletta, like uh, Western Global, um, uh, National Cargo, those guys, most of them are going to be some of the old salty guys that, that flew for um, uh, Air America, Southern Air Transport, you know, drug runners, CIA stuff. OK, and uh, now they've gone to work for the for the big boys uh, flying air cargo. OK. All right. Sorry, this is Western Global. So this one over here was actually not Western. This was actual national uh, cargo. And Western Global, I don't have anything in the air right now. It's a smaller fleet, but we'll we'll keep a pulse on it. And then uh, camper flights, troop movers, or things that go boom from time to time depends on who's carrying it. Probably troops when it comes to six, seven, three hundreds and two hundreds. Uh, looks like we got one leaving Seattle and one leaving Washington, so both coasts headed uh, headed outbound. So this looks to be headed into London Heathrow, and uh, this one uh, appears to be coming inbound. Uh, actually, no, you know what? That's, uh, oh, interesting. Where is this one coming from? IAD. I'm just going to click on it. All right. Washington Dulles. So we got a third on there. There's Washington Dulles. All right. This must be the one coming. Okay. This is coming from Boeing field. This is coming from Washington Dulles. So scratch what I first told you and reverse it. All right. Okay. Uh, on over here to this side of it. It's going to be your Omnis busy today. They had they were very unbusy the other day, if that's even a word. Uh, notice you got one headed down southbound. So we got uh, Seattle to March Air Force Base, March Air Force Base over to Hawaii, and then another one from Hawaii to uh, Okinawa. All right. What are we looking at here? This is going to be your Navy carriers. We'll just back it up. One coming out of Hawaii. Not seeing anything. Uh, over here in terms of Europe, although that one is definitely headed to Europe, and this one looks to be coming inbound from Europe. That's going to be Navy Logistics. And then here are your Brits. Uh, looks like they're rolling in and out of the Middle East, and that one's over the Mediterranean, 30,000 feet, and then this one looks to be coming into, into the UK. And then that one's coming out of the southern side, appears to be the southern side of Spain, uh, cruising at 34,000 feet, 412 miles an hour. So, okay, that is going to do it for today. Listen, uh, stay frosty, keep that powder dry. Things I think are definitely about to, uh, to change here in the coming months. If we continue to see 
um, drone strikes on the interior side of Russia. That's definitely going to change the war. I, I bet my life on it because Russia won't tolerate that. They're going to end up going uh, hot and heavy towards NATO and, uh, and Ukraine. So I am seeing other indications within the news cycle that uh, uh, Zelensky is actually rethinking some of his uh, areas uh, that are in direct conflict with Russia on the borders right now. So um, it's it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. All right. All right. That's it. You guys be safe out there. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.